Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about fixing one of the most common faults with the Honda Blackbird, which is the regulator rectifier. If you're new here, my name's Sarah. I post motorcycle-related content on YouTube every Friday. If you like what you see, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button down below. Check back every week for more new content. One of the most common issues with the Honda Blackbird is a failure of the regulator rectifier. Typically, that results in overcharging and it can cause various electrical issues or even damage electrical components such as your ECU and your battery. I haven't got the issue with my bike at the moment, but I'm doing a preventative measure to stop it happening in the future. So the reason the regulator rectifiers fail on the Blackbird is they're relatively old technology and the way that they work is once the battery is fully charged any excess current is just shorted to ground effectively. Um, what that does is generates an awful lot of heat in the regulator rectifier and over a period of time that heat destroys the components. MOSFET regulators as fitted to nearly all modern bikes, uh, certainly bikes made in the last 10 years, uh, work in a different way in the way they dissipate the extra energy that's produced by the charging system generates less heat. They still shunt it to ground but the way that it works generates less heat. I'm not going to go into a great deal of technical detail in this video. If you want to know about it you can go and search for it online. So this is a regulator rectifier that I'm going to be fitting to the Blackbird today. It's an FH020AA. It came off a Yamaha FJ. Uh, these regulators are exactly the same as the FH012AA. Uh, the connectors on these are different but fitting them to a Blackbird is very simple. Let's get on with fitting this new regulator rectifier to the bike. So the regulator rectifier on the Blackbird is located under the tailpiece. It's very easy to remove that, it's only a couple of bolts. I've removed it prior to the video because I had a givey wing on here and it takes an awful lot of time to get that off. This is the original regulator rectifier. So before I start, I'm gonna disconnect the battery. The reason I'm gonna do that is the red and white wire here is connected permanently to the battery. Uh, so if I was to work on this, then this would be live and I could potentially short something out and cause damage to the bike. First thing I'm gonna do is disconnect the battery terminal here. So I'm just gonna disconnect the negative, move that terminal out of the way so that we isolate the battery. And then we can move on to the regulator rectifier and unplug it. So you see we've got three yellow cables. They're the ones that come from the alternator or the generator. That's three phase AC and the voltage varies depending on the RPM of the engine. And then on the other side of the connector we've got a red and a white and a green. The red and white cable is the positive and that's connected directly back to the battery via the main fuse which is on the starter solenoid. And the green is connected to, to ground or to the negative side of the battery. Next thing we'll do is we'll remove the old regulator rectifier and then test fit the new one. With the new regulator rectifier it's a little bit thicker where it bolts onto the frame. So the original bolts are too short. So I've been and found some slightly longer ones. So let's get this bolted on here. Now if you use a FH020AA or FH012AA regulator rectifier, the original bolt holes in the frame will line up with the holes in the new regulator rectifier. So that means you don't need to make any adapters or anything like that. It will bolt straight on in the original position and the cables are even long enough to reach. So this really is a very simple upgrade for the Blackbird. Apart from refitting a new connector to the, to the electrical side of things, it's very straightforward. And next thing we need to do is fit these new connectors the existing wiring loom. We've already disconnected the battery. 
The reason I disconnected it is this red and white is connected directly back to it and I'm about to cut it through and if I hadn't disconnected it and it touched any, th any metal components then it would short out and blow the fuse on the bike. So, scary bit, let's cut off the original connector. So now we have our bare wires. So I'm just going to strip some of this insulation back so that we can terminate the cables well. I'm just going to take a knife and very carefully slice through that without damaging the cables underneath. So now we've got better access to all the cables. So we've got our red and white, which is the positive to the battery, the green, which is the negative. They connect to the black connector. There's only two terminals in here. And on these, the negative is towards the outside and the positive is towards the inside. And then on the gray connector, we connect the three phases from the generator or the alternator. And it doesn't matter what order these are connected in. Those, these cables are going to be a little bit too long, so I'm going to cut those down. These ones are already exactly the right length, so I don't need to touch those. Let's just get these trimmed down. And what we'll do is we'll fit the terminals to these and then fit the connectors. So the terminals have got these small little rubber seals which stop the water getting in. So I need to pop one of those on each cable first. And then these are our terminals, or new terminals, which are designed to be crimped onto the cable. And I am only going to crimp them, I'm not going to solder them. There's lots of arguments against soldering terminals on motorcycles and cars. Um, I'm not going to go into that in this video. If you'd like to see more about it, you can check it out on Google. But generally it's a bad idea to solder terminals on a bike or a car because the vibration can cause cracking. So to crimp these, ideally you need a proper crimp tool. These are pretty cheap to buy. I think this one was £15 off Wish and it comes with lots of different dies to suit. So let's get our cable ends stripped. Then we'll take our crimp tool and the new terminal. Center that in the jaws. And that will make off our nice new terminal. You can see with these proper crimp tools, you get a nice professional crimp. So that's those two done, just move those out of the way then we'll deal with our inputs the terminals on these regulator rectifiers are handed or keyed differently so that you can't plug them in incorrectly so we need to make sure we put the right terminals into the right housing. This one is the one for the input side and then we just need to put them in the right way up and they just push in and click in and just push the seal in after it. These all in here. I'll just use a little screwdriver to seat these seals completely in the housing. And the seals will keep the water and the dirt out. We can do exactly the same with the output, this time making sure that we get them the right way around. So the connector goes on that, that way round. So our 
green needs to go in this side which is our ground and our positive goes towards the middle of the rectifier and then again pop the seals in just push those seals the rest of the way in there all terminals and connectors on just going to make sure we fit them properly the connectors are very tight onto the body uh, so you do need to make sure you get them on all the way because they will feel like they're on when they're only halfway on they push up nearly flush with the body so they feel like they're on there but they actually go quite a bit further than that so there we go that's all connected now so we'll just reconnect the battery so I've reconnected the battery we've got 12.8 volts so I'm just going to start the bike up and then check the voltage on the battery it should be between 13 and a half and 14 and a half volts so let's see what we get So there we go, that's it. That's fitting a modern MOSFET regulator to the Blackbird. We've got 14 and a half volts when charging, so all is well there. As you can see, really easy, straightforward swap. Uh, they bolt straight on in the position of the original regulator rectifier. You don't need to make any new brackets or anything. You just need to change the connectors on the loom. I do recommend that you buy new connectors. They are relatively readily available if you search for them online. I'll put a link in the description below to where I got them from they cost me about $15 so they're not particularly expensive I do also recommend that you invest in some crimp tools if you're going to do a little bit of electrical work on your bike so if you've had a regulator rectifier failure and you're looking for a way of addressing that and stopping it happening again in the future fitting in a MOSFET regulator is going to make your charging circuit an awful lot more reliable so I'm just going to put my bike back together now I'm going to put the tailpiece back on I'm not going to go into a great deal of detail about that because I've also got to refit my wing rack as well I hope you found this video useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button down below. Check back next week for more new content. Until then, if you're back out riding in this lovely weather, ride safe and I'll see you again really soon.